Let's take a few moments to go over layer mask in 3D Coat. I want to start off as a point of reference to show how you can use some of the same features that you may be accustomed to in Photoshop and apply them in 3D Coat. So here I have just a, a standard layer that does not have any work done to it. And the layer beneath it has a layer mask, as you can see by this second thumbnail here. Black is 100% transparent. White is 100% opaque or visible. So anything in between is just varying degrees of transparency or opacity. If I were to select a portion of the background to mask it out, you'll notice if I select first and then I click on Add Layer Mask, it knocks out just the opposite of what I had selected. The reason I point this out is there's a similar result in 3D Coat, so it's nothing to be alarmed about. So I'm going to undo. I can simply select Inverse, and now when I add a layer mask, it will knock that portion out. Also, there's another function in 3D Coat that allows you to apply this layer mask. So in Photoshop, if I were to drag this to the trash bin, I have the option now to apply the layer mask or delete it. In this case, we're going to click Apply and notice that it removes both the pixels that were masked as well as the layer mask itself. And also, when you want to drop a selection in Photoshop, you hit Control D. Same thing applies in 3D Coat. Anytime you make a selection, a free selection or something, hit Control D and it will deselect it. Now let's see how layer masks are done in 3D Coat in comparison. You simply select the layer that you want to apply a mask to. So in this case I'm going to unhide this layer. Let's say there are some lines that I want to mask out in order to declutter this a bit. What I can do is step one, create a new layer. Step two, give it an appropriate name so that's easier to identify. Glow01 underscore mask. Okay, step three is to go back to the original layer and we need to link it. We do that by going to the blending tab and at the very bottom you can link it to any layer in the layer panel. It will adopt its color as a mask. In this case we'll, we'll choose the one that we've just created. And if everything is masked out as you see here you can just invert the linkage just as you would invert the selection in Photoshop. Now we can go back to our layer mask and apply paint to that layer. So I have the paintbrush selected. I'll choose a draw mode in the E panel or I can hit the E key to bring it to me anywhere in the viewport where my cursor is. And uh, yeah, you could choose any of these selection types. In fact, I'll use the freeform lasso. I can also choose a brush and in 3D Coat, the color is not important. The opacity on your brush is. So if I bring this down to about 50%, you can see the result. Now, step five is to simply bring the opacity down on the mask layer itself. If I hide and unhide the layer mask, you can see the difference. I'll bring my opacity back up to 100% and start to paint the rest of this section out. So this could be a good technique to use starting from zero and painting areas out. Or instead of clicking on inverse linkage, you could start and paint areas in just depending on your preference. And the benefit of using layer mask is that if at some point you want to go back and restore any portion of this, you can. If you use Erase Tool and save your, your file, it's going to be hard trying to get that information back. So this is a, a very flexible and non-destructive way of working. One last important note here is that 
when you are painting your layer mask, use only the color channel as it will affect all three channels on your original layer depth, color, and specularity on the layer that you are masking. So if I did not want to affect all three channels on the original layer, what I need to do is create a new layer, name it appropriately. Uh, for example, if I wanted to preserve the specularity channel of the original layer, I would need to name it Glow Spec, and then I could go to the Layers menu and copy the channel that I want to preserve. Okay, I'll show that in the layer video uh, in practice because there's one other thing I want to point out. But another way is to just make sure that as you're working, if you think that you're going to need to mask anything, you may want to actually create separate layers uh, for that very purpose. So for example, you may want to make a, a glow spec layer, a glow depth or bump layer, and so on. Okay, so I hope that helps, and thank you for watching.